The first commercial electrical telegraph was co-developed by William Fothergill Cook and Charles Wheatstone. Prior to this new electrical communications system, it could take months or even years to send a message from London to, let's say, Hong Kong. In May 1837, they patented a telegraph system which used a number of needles on a board that could be moved to point to letters of the alphabet. The system was proved to work when it was installed on the 25th of July 1837 on the Euston to Camden Town railway line, which was being constructed by Robert Stevenson. The first commercial use of the system being in 1838 on the 13-mile stretch of the Great Western Railway from Paddington to West Drayton. The patent recommended a five-needle system, but any number of needles could be used. The first use by the British Army of the electrical telegraph was in the Crimean War of 1856. The equipment they used was a simplified version of Cook and Wheatstone's original, with only a single needle, thus the single needle telegraph. By this time, Morse had invented his code, which had become almost universally used. The British commander, General Simpson, who had succeeded Lord Raglan, was inundated with inquiries from the War Department on pettifogging matters of minor administrative detail. They have ruined everything, he was reputed to have commented. William Russell, the first of all war correspondents, was able to send reports by telegraph to the Times, the Thunderer, under its great editor, J.T. Delane. Even the War Office was shaken by his reports of incompetence and suffering, and the Prime Minister, George Hamilton Gordon Aberdeen, resigned to be replaced by Henry John Temple Palmerston. Russell famously sent two particular reports back, which had a real social impact. This illustrated the immediacy and impact of high-speed electrical communications. The first was the story of the thin red line of cavalry who charged a Russian artillery position, later made famous in a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson, The Charge of the Light Brigade. A second report referred to the dreadful medical conditions which shocked and outraged the public. Of the 60,000 crack troops that left Britain in 1854, 43,000 were dead or disabled by January 1855. 7,000 of these had fallen in battle. Cholera, exposure and starvation took the rest. French and English soldiers contracted the cholera bacteria at Marseille, and many died of the disease before even reaching the Crimea. In two out of the four days that it took the convoy to sail from Varna to the Crimea, HMS Britannia alone recorded 109 deaths. As a result of this public backlash, Sidney Herbert, Secretary for War, sent out Florence Nightingale, who he knew personally, to the Crimea in an official capacity. She revolutionised battlefield treatment and created a professional nursing service, cleaning up the hospitals. Florence Nightingale arrived in Scutari on the day before the Battle of Inkerman in November 1854 and there organised the first base hospital of modern times. With few nurses and scant equipment, she reduced the death rate at Scutari from 42 per 100 to 22 per 1,000 men. Initially, the methods of communication were identical with those of the Napoleonic Wars, but later on, two significant technical advances were made. An overland line was built from Bucharest to Varna by the French 95th Regiment of the Line at the joint expense of English and French governments, and a submarine cable, 340 miles long, was laid under the Black Sea from Varna to Balaclava. 24 miles of field cable was provided, carried on two specially designed carts and laid below ground by a cable plough. As a result, contact with London took about 24 hours in transmission between terminal offices. These two advances were initiated by the Electric Telegraph Company, who, at the outbreak of the war, placed its services and stores at the disposal of the government. The company trained a number of operators, but, in true military fashion, only one was employed in that capacity in the Crimea, where he was required to train a fresh batch of sappers as Morse operators. The invention of the electric telegraph, which was successfully used militarily in the Crimean War, marked the beginning of the end for the more traditional forms of signalling, and ushered in the electronic age of signalling.